Hey, yo, what's up? This is the Cypher Marcello Kearns Rain back up in this anti Illuminati all day, anti America all day. <clears throat> so, this video is going to be about the Americans trying to stop random acts of pedophilia, but not trying to stop established child marriage laws. Trying to stop random acts of pedophilia, but not trying to stop established. Established now, established child marriage laws. Now, in the South, what we call this is putting the cart before the horse, when, which means the priorities are not in their proper place. You don't have. You're not prioritizing things that should be first. You're not putting them in that place. You're putting them behind. You're putting things that should be first behind other things. And so if you have random acts of pedophilia that you're after or random pedophiles, if you will, and that's what you're going after, it doesn't make sense to a man like me who is educated on the laws of your community that has established child marriage because you're still going to have at the end of the day child victims and you're going to have child victims by law by government which is worse because it's legal it's nothing you can do so you can go out and try to catch pedophiles, but you can't go out and try to stop people from being with children when it's legal. You can't stop some guy from marrying a child or some woman from marrying a child when it's legal. You can't stop random acts of of an adult with child with a child and they're having sex. Random acts of child sex when the age of consent is under 18 in 40 states in America. How can you stop that? And you can't you can't stop it unless you really attack the system itself and you're not doing that. And that's the major problem in the community. You're not stopping, you're not saying anything about it. You know? You're not saying anything about this. You're waiting to you're 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 waiting for it to get better. You're waiting for somebody to say, hey, let's do something about this. Who knows when that will come? Do you know when that will come? So you're pursuing random acts of child pedophilia or random pedophiles in your country, people who have bad politics, you go after them too, who's not popular with the community. But among the popular community, you have 44 states with child marriage. And I got to do a video about this. This is for all the alpha males, all the jocks in your community. This is for all the superstars and the movie stars. They're all under 44 states with child marriage. They're all under it. They're all under 44 states with child marriage. Right? There's no doubt about that. There's no doubt about it. So what are you supposed to call yourself doing when you have people that are marrying children, are allowing, yeah, marrying children, people that are passing laws in your, in your, in your country to marry children. What do you call yourself doing? Chasing around pedophiles. My point of view is, if it, my point of view is this: if if there's, who cares about random pedophiles? I care about these laws that are randomly everywhere in forty-four states. <laughs> That's what I care about. I care about random child marriage laws. That's what I care about. I care about various 
now I'm using more serious words. I was kind of being sarcastic, but I care about various child marriage laws in various city, states and cities in your country. That's what I care about. That's what you should care about. Because at the end of the day, you're not going to stop the real major problem. The real major problem is what I would think you would think is, which I think, whether you think it or not, is adults interacting with anyone under 18. That's the real problem. So what is child marriage? Don't you think that's the extreme or the paramount in this situation? That's the paramount in this situation. That's the paramount. That's the high that's the highest place in this situation. Child marriage. The person gets to have the child 24/7. They get to have the child 24-7, right? 24-7. It's no way you can compare, like I've said before, random acts of pedophilia with child marriage. You can't compare the two. One is 24-7, one is random. One is one place in time. The other one is all the rest of time. The rest of that person's, those two individuals' lives. The rest of their lives together is a state of pedophilia. And see, it also brings about a worldwide confrontation. An international confrontation of this issue. Because, like I've said before, in Jamaica, the age of consent is 16. In Brazil, the age of consent is 14. And if you really be 100 about it, the place where you have beautiful men and women, this is the place where it gets lower and lower as far as the age of consent. Where they have beautiful people, which you can't deny. Brazil has some of the most beautiful people in the world. Brazil has some of the most beautiful women in the whole wide world. And so, you think it's a coincidence that they have the age of consent at 14 years old? That they, that they have sex with 14-year-old girls? You think that's a coincidence? And they have the most beautiful women in Brazil in the world, they don't have to do nothing to their body. They have beautiful breasts, beautiful butts. They don't have to do nothing to their body at all. You think it's a coincidence that in Brazil, the age of consent is 14 years old? You think that's just happened to be like that? Just happened to be like that? That's just a coincidence, right? That's just happened to be a coincidence. Beautiful women everywhere. Beautiful women everywhere. And then the age of consent is at 14. Now you would think, now here's the catch, here's the catch with it. You would think in Brazil with all those beautiful women, you wouldn't be even thinking about no 14-year-old girls, would you? But see, that's what people deviate in their minds. Okay? They look at the beautiful women around, and then they see something younger. Now she ain't even got the, the fully developed breast yet. She ain't even got the full, fully developed butt yet. You see, it's it's a form of, it's, 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 it's satanic. That's the only way you can describe it. And that place is a perfect example. You got all those beautiful women in Brazil. I mean, any kind, any, any man will eventually find a woman. I mean, eventually. It may take some time. It may not take some time. But through all of that, someone decides to make the age of consent at 14 with all those beautiful women in Brazil. 
It ain't. My point is, it's not that it's a lack of women or a lack of beautiful women or a lack of women of your choice and liking. It's not that, is it? Brazil is the perfect example. And then they still use, a, then they still, out of all those beautiful women, they decide to pick a 14-year-old girl. She doesn't have that bathing suit body that them other women have. I'm pretty sure she don't. That's what I'm trying to show you. Where some men do not want a fully beautiful woman. They don't want a voluptuous woman. They don't want a developed woman. Brazil is a perfect example. You got all those beautiful women and you still want some undeveloped 14-year-old girl? Man, come on, man. That's ridiculous. The last thing will be on a real man's mind is a 14-year-old girl in Brazil. I'll tell you that. <laughs> I didn't, no, 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 no. No, I promise you that. Somebody's going to capture his attention. And I promise you, he won't be worried about no 14-year-old girl. Not a real man. I promise you that. Some, somebody's going to capture your attention. Some face is just going to take off your whole attention. You see her face and it's over. That's just that. That's what you want. <laughs> but here they are with the age of consent at 14. Same thing with Jamaica. Now, Jamaica used to have it at 14. Jamaica used to have the age of consent at, at, at 14. Before 1988. After 1988, Jamaica decided to put the age of consent at 16 years old. Now, like I've told the Americans, like I've told the Americans, 16 year olds are, that's child vagina. That is child vagina. All these exotic places like to have the age of consent under 18, don't they? And do I think that's a coincidence? I do not think that's a coincidence. Do I think it's a coincidence that Jamaica does not put the age of consent at 18? I do not think that's a coincidence. I think that they are another society that decides to look at children in a sexual way. But in Jamaica, what I think specifically, individually there is that some of the women, the females become voluptuous at an earlier age in their life and they can't wait until 18. That's specifically for them. That's what I think. And it doesn't make it right. It does not change a thing. Because at the end of the day, no matter how voluptuous a girl is, if she's not 18, it's child vagina. Bottom line. Bottom line, man. And so, so it's an international issue now. It's an international issue. But what puts America in debt, besides other people, what I got to show you is they went around witch hunting me and other people without any true evidence or crimes. And then we find out they are marrying children. They don't even know their own laws. And that's where they have the fatal cocktail. I can't speak for other countries, but this is where America has the fatal cocktail to their system because you went around oblivious to the to the laws of your own system. You went around uneducated, fighting people when you re, you went, when you didn't realize you didn't have the power to fight. You don't have the power to fight when you have forty four states with child marriage. I'm sorry, that's anarchy to me. I'm not an anarchist, but that's anarchy when because no one feels the need to obey a system here in America. That is marrying children. Anybody feel this need to obey that system? Do you feel a need to abide by any of their laws whatsoever? 
The only reason I abide by laws is because they're still in effect and I'm not trying to go to jail. But I do not respect the laws and that's why I abide by them out of respect. I don't abide by the laws out of respect anymore. You have 44 states with child marriage, man. That's in your system. That's in the same law system that locks up all criminals. It's one system. You get that part, right? So the same system that goes and locks up the drug dealers, the thugs, everybody else, they have that same system has 44 states for child marriage. It might be cross town, <laughs> so to speak, as far as the laws go. It might be cross town from what you're doing, per se. Legally speaking, as far as the law system goes, it might be cross town as far as the laws go, but it's in there. It's in there, though. 44 states for child marriage is in the in the law system of America. Now, do you feel like a, the, the, the need? Do you feel a, the need to obey a system like that? So you're cool with getting locked up with a system that's married children. You're cool with going and being arrested by law enforcement that also allows child marriage. You're cool with that. That's why you know anarchy is on the way. Because people like me don't feel no need to obey the whole thing. I don't feel no need to obey none of it. Well, why should I listen to people who are who are pedophiles? That's like saying, okay, I'm going to submit to the pedophiles and let them arrest me. That's what it is. <laughs> that's what that's what it is. It's a lot, it's 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 being locked up by a, ped a pedophile system. The same system that tries to get um, that tries to bring justice against you doesn't bring justice concerning the children. That's what I'm talking about. They don't bring judgment. They don't bring justice concerning the children, but they try to lock you up. They let children go and be victimized in child marriage, but they but they locking you up. But the children go free. The pedophile gets to have a, a child marriage, but you got to get locked up. Come on, man. Come on, man. That's what I'm saying. So you know what's going to happen here? Here's what's going to happen. When all the right people find out that they have child marriage in our country, anarchy is coming because the police, military, the feds are all going to agree with me. They're all going to be on my side. For my enemies, you might want to keep that in mind that ultimately everyone is going to be on my side, right? That's ultimately inevitable, right? <laughs> It's ultimately inevitable. They're going to be on my side. And that's going to be your demise. Okay? I don't know any good cops are going to sit up and, 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 and serve law enforcement with child marriage also. I don't know any military that's going that's going to serve a country that's marrying children. I don't it's just it's going to be just like how there's the conflict with the vaccination, right? You got some people that are even military teachers from every walk of life. Some people agree with it, disagree with it. Firemen, everything in between. Politicians even. It's going to be the same thing with child marriage. You're going to have people that totally disagree with it and it's going to bring about a separation. The vaccination also has brought about a separation that people do not want to admit there's still people not vaccinated, you know. Their kids are not vaccinated. They're not vaccinated. And they come from all walks of life. Yep. And, it, and so if people are divided on the vaccination, you don't think they're going to be divided on child marriage? And you know what that means? That there's not going to be any real American system anymore. It's not going to, it's not going to, um, it's not going to be valid in the minds of people anymore. See, I think 
And when I think, how can you sit up and obey a law system that does that? Right? And see, you should have knew this was coming. This is how you know I'm a true prophet of God. Because you would have never thought that you would have been able to find some type of situation with Jamaica, would you? Before this, there was no problem. That's how you know I'm a prophet of God. That's how you know. Because, first of all, it's not of me. I don't have any problem with Jamaica. In fact, my first and two only roommates here in New York City was going to both be Jamaicans. So, obviously, they take a liking to me. I don't have a problem. That's real Jamaicans, by the way. I don't have a problem with Jamaicans. So don't get it misunderstood. Okay? My first two roommates, my first roommate here in New York City was going to be a Jamaican. Okay? So have that. So understand, I've been around real Jamaicans in New York City. I've been around real Jamaicans. Right? So, so it's nothing. It's not. Don't be, don't be slow. Right? And think it means something that it doesn't mean. Right. Because nothing comes. Nobody comes before an integrity, before integrity. Nobody comes before character, integrity and honor. No one is up there with it. It stands on its own and we have to meet it. We all have to. We all have to climb up to integrity. Integrity doesn't come down to our standards. We go up to its standards. Make sense? That's what any gener that's what any people, right? It doesn't matter who it is. And that's how we got the Americans. Because see, it's more than just an American issue. And America's the only one bucking the system. You bucking the system of God, man. <laughs> you bucking the system, man. Like, listen, listen, I, I no longer, I no longer esteem the American government and system as I once did. I no longer esteem military as I once did. I no longer esteem police as I once did. I found out that I found out that two New York cops was having sex with a 15 year old girl. Yeah, go look it up. NYPD having sex with a 15 year old girl. Listen, man, things that you would die for rather than to do. Look how they just doing it. I'm not saying I want to do it, but look how they just do stuff and they just get away with it. And you can't, you can't even barely sneeze around a 15 year old girl. You, you can't even, you can't even barely smell the hair of a 15 year old girl without somebody saying something. Looked like he was trying to smell her hair, didn't it? <laughs> yeah, watch that weirdo. He looked like he was trying to smell that girl's hair. I swear it did. It looks like he was, it looked like he was trying to smell that girl's hair. <laughs> you can't even smell a 15-year-old girl's hair without the whole community on your on your butt. And you got and you and you got and you got the you got two NYPD cops who supposed to be a beacon of honor and integrity in your community. One of them was getting jacked off in the in the cop car. I can't make this up. One of them was getting jacked off in the cop car. Now you see why I don't take nobody seriously? Now you see why I carry myself the way I do? Because I'm educated on the stuff that's going on. This is facts. This ain't no conspiracy and speculation. This ain't no spectation. Two cops got caught having sex with a 15-year-old girl. NYPD. Not some country town, because y'all like to think all this kind of stuff happened in the country town. Then explains why explain why the NYPD having sex with a 15 year old girl then. Explain that one then. Right here in the big city, buddy. Right here in the big apple. Explain that one. How, explain how two NYPD cops find their way to having sex with a 15 year old girl now. Explain it, man. One of them was getting jacked off in the cop car that he's supposed to serve you in. You got an excuse for that? 
Wouldn't you want him dead if that was your little, your 15 year old girl? Wouldn't you want that cop dead? Oh, you want to preserve? You want to you give him a second chance? You want to forgive? He's getting jacked off in the cop car. You want to forgive? What if, you're, what if that was your little daughter jacking off of a police officer? Jacking him off, giving him a hand job. How, how many other ways can I put it? <laughs> For people that might not get it. Giving him a hand job, stroking his, his penis in the cop car, obviously unto ejaculation. I'm pretty sure. In the same cop car he was supposed to be serving you in and serving kids in as far as protection. And guess what? Guess where they met the 15-year-old girl? Guess where the New York cops met the 15-year-old girl? Guess where the New York City cops met the 15-year-old the girl at? Met her in a program, in a police program, in a precinct. She was in a program, in a New York, pro, New York City police program. They scooped her up out the program. Having her getting her getting her to jack one of them off in the cop car, she was in a, a New York City program, police department program in a precinct, right? In the precinct, she was there in a program as a troubled teen. In the program now, if it couldn't get no worse, they was in other words for people that don't understand what that means, they were supposed to be helping her as a troubled teen. This makes it worse. Yes. They were in, she was in their on their grounds looking for help, looking for the police, not the YMCA, not some other program from government assistance. They she was in a New York City police department program. And one of the cops got a hand job from her in the cop car. Which means when and what I'm thinking is she was up there one day at the precinct at the program and then after she got done he pulled her aside to his cop car. Now I get that's probably probably how it happened. Where else he found her at? She's already in the program. Up there in his in his clutches. Where else he find her? Where else did he scoop her up and put her in the cop car at? He probably was up there Talked to her after the little program thing and took him to took her to his car. Now, now that's one of the cops. The other cop was getting her to come to his house. The same two cops on one girl, man. On oh, two cops on one girl. Man, you man, you, you don't want them dead. You want them to live in prosperity and peace. They will want you dead. Hey, the police will want you dead. Let's be 100. Let's keep it 100 up in here. The police will want you dead. If you mess with some 15-year-old girl, if, you, if two grown men was messing, double teaming a 15-year-old girl, they will want you dead. Oh, they will want you to live. Most of them will want you dead. You don't want them dead. Oh, you ignoring what they do, huh? That don't mean nothing to you, do it. Well, there's your random acts of pedophilia that you like to go after. You don't like to go after the system. You like to look for pedophiles random in your community. There you go right there. <laughs> you got two NYPD cops randomly playing around a 15-year-old girl. There you go. <laughs> That's what you like to go after to pat yourself on the back. You don't want to go after the real, the real, the real pedophiles. You just like to do it enough to stroke your ego, don't you? That's what you like to do. Explain to me why you ain't went out to the 44 states with child marriage yet, then. Yeah, we are waiting for you to be somebody for real. You ain't you ain't went out to the real you ain't went out to the real villains. You playing. You playing games. You 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 patting yourself on the back. You think you it's all about your alter ego thinking you Batman. As long as you do enough to think you're Batman, you're good. That's a seven hour. <laughs> Yeah, 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 as long as you do enough to make you feel like you're Superman, 
then you're good. As long as you do enough to make you feel like you're some, some superhero, you're good. I'm attacking the real problem. I'm attacking the real problem. Why are you just doing enough to make yourself feel good? Hey, I know I'm telling the truth because half of these cops don't care anyway. They're just going to make their little money, clean up the clean it up just to make it look pretty. Clean up the streets, make it look pretty. You know, stop the rowdiness, you know. They ain't really trying to go out to no criminals. Think about it for what it is. <laughs> they ain't trying to go after no criminals. They just trying to make it look pretty. Make sure nobody don't feel disturbed. Right? The other cop, the other cop was having her come to his house in the middle of the night. You know they did everything. Come on, man. Come on. You think he came over there? You think he did what the other cop, car, the cop did? Got a hand job. He did everything. Now I want you to know the. T I want you to think about the details. Yeah, I want you to think about the details. Cause you ain't gonna get mad unless you think about the details. Cause you got stick figures in your mind when I tell you what happens. Oh yeah, cop got you a girl. Stick figures. She goes into the house. Stick figures. You got stick figure images in your mind of this happening. So let me go. Let's go through the details. Because you got stick figures in your mind of all of this 44 states with child marriage. 44 states with child marriage. Stick figures. 44 states. Stick figures. That's I'm, I'm being 100. You do not develop the true details in your mind. You, what you think that cop did when they get, that girl got over there? You know, he, you know, she, you know, she gave him, you know, she gave him oral sex. Pretty sure that's what started. Pretty sure that set it off. I'm pretty sure he gave her oral sex. Well, these pedophiles like a young and fresh. I'm pretty sure he'd like to see what it tastes like. Nah, we got it. And he probably ate her, ate her anus. Probably ate her butt. Probably sure he wanted to see what that tastes like. Well, if grown men like to see what other women taste like, I'm pretty sure he wants to see what his companion tastes like. Hey, that's what he desires. You don't think he's doing everything? Come on, man. You know how they think. They think that's fresh. He, gave, he ate her vagina. I guarantee you, he ate her vagina, probably sucked her toes, and probably ate her butt, and licked on her nipples, and, 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 and had sex with her. In every position he could think about. She ain't just come about, she ain't come over his house one time. It didn't say that. She came over his house a series of times. I don't know how many times, but it didn't say one time. She was coming over his house at the in the middle of the night. And see, this is what you really need to know. This is the part that you want to leave out. And I and I gotta, I gotta, I gotta bring the full truth. This girl was with it. Yeah, your little angel. <laughs> your little angel was with having sex with these cops. Well, she wasn't resisting, was she? No pun intended, but she wasn't resisting arrest, was she? <laughs> hey, she wasn't resisting arrest, was she? Not when she coming over his house in the middle of the night. Not when she in the cop car jacking them off. Yeah, you hate to face the facts that they, that these kids these days are witted. Yeah, your little angels jacking off people in the cop car. Your little angel meeting some guy at the, meeting some cop in the middle of the night. Pretty sure he was strong and restraining her and doing all kind of things. Come on, a cop is pretty strong. I'm pretty sure he was doing everything. Man, come on, man. You don't want to be, you don't want to know the facts. You need, you need to know the facts and think about the facts. So you can get angry enough when you have two cops that's supposed to be serving the New York PD, New York City uh, area. Instead of doing that, they having sex with a 15-year-old girl. Oh, you ain't mad about that? Oh, I want you to get mad. I don't have no problem with you. I don't have no problem with telling you. I want you to get mad because you ain't going to do nothing until you do. 
You're going to sit back and think it's everybody else. And look at the, look at this situation. Straight up cops, straight up cops having sex with a 15 year old girl. Not part-time cops. These was no part-time cops. These was real official cops with real badge numbers. You can go look them up. They got weird names, so I, don't, I can't say their names right off the cuff. But you can go look them up. Two NYPD cops having sex with a 15-year-old girl. And now you see why I don't respect anybody. Why I don't see... And you can sit up here... And play a Jedi mind trick and say, well, it ain't all the cops. Of course it ain't all the cops. That's a moron's statement in reply to what I just said. That makes no sense to me for you to bring that up. Uh, obviously, it's not all the cops. So what is your point for bringing that up? Because you're not bringing them to proper justice. You know what happened? I don't even think those cops got, arrest, uh, got arrested. They just They just got fired. Well, last time I checked, getting fired doesn't get you off the street away from 15-year-old girls now, does it? That's a seven hour. Last time I checked, getting somebody fired from a job doesn't stop them from being a predator to the community. They can go get another 15-year-old girl. Especially now that they're not cops. <laughs> And listen, y'all hold everybody else in, in this legend folklore for what they did 20 years ago. This didn't happen 10 years ago. Boom. This didn't even happen 10 years ago. How come, how come y'all already forgot about it? Oh, yeah, you yapping about stuff that happened 20, 30 years ago. How come y'all forgot about the NYPD cops that had sex with that 15-year-old girl less than 10 years ago? Huh? It wasn't 10 years ago. That's all that matters to me. But you, and guess what? They just put out all the, they put out the additional information about it last year. That's how you know it wasn't a long time ago. They put out information about it. I think it was either last year or 2021. It was 2021. So just now, two years ago, they put out information on it, right? Not quite two years ago, a little over a year ago. How come y'all community ain't talking about that? Yeah, that's for all the neighborhood watch people. How come you ain't talking about them two cops that had sex with that 15 year old girl and got away with it? They didn't get locked up. They got fired. That's not justice. Oh, cause you lose a job. You're unemployed. That's justice. That's not justice. Just because you're unemployed, justice is putting you behind bars with criminals. You see the double standard? Do you see the double standard? Had that been some street person, some street guy, he would still be in there right now. Had that, had that been two street guys, they would have still been in there right now. Two cops do it and they get, they get perks. The perks is they don't go to jail. They got perks when it comes to what they when they do crimes. Let's keep it 100. Had sex with a 15-year-old girl. They didn't even go to jail. No time in jail. No time. They just got fired. Now you see why I act the way I act. Now you see why. See, you don't know this information. So how can you act like me? How can you judge my moods how can you judge my attitude when you don't know what I know? Yeah, make it make sense. You up here dumb as dumb as they can be. You don't know nothing about this. But you worried about my attitude. Man, come on, man. Man, listen, man. I could care less what you think about my attitude. When I know about stuff like this and you don't. You got NYPD having sex with a 15, 15 year old girl. That's that's illegal here. And you don't care nothing about it. See, you're not focused on the real stuff you should be focused on. You, you, you go after styles of pedophilia. You go after certain styles of pedophiles. That's what I'm going to go. I'm going to do a video on that, too. You like to go after a certain style of a pedophile. I just showed you where the real one's at. 
So if you really was about that life of going after real pedophiles, you would go on, you would be going after every single style of pedophiles. Boy, that's good. Because see, you got in your mind a certain type of a pedophile, the wild person, the scruffy looking person, the sketchy looking person. That's the kind of pedophile of your liking. Because Hollywood and all this stuff on TV, all this stuff in the media has made you feel that that's what a pedophile is. Then what was those two men? What was those two NYPD cops? That wasn't no pedophiles. That was not a pedophile. That went after a 15-year-old girl. That's not a pedophile to you. 15? 15 years old. Here, right here in New York. Right here in New York. She was not 16. She was not 17. She was not 18 or 19. She was 15 years old, and I'm sure the cops knew. Man, come on, they knew. She was in the precinct with them. They prayed on her. She was in a program called the Explorer. How 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 oxymoron or uh, or coincidental or ironic is that? It's ironic, ain't it? Hmm, very ironic that she's in a program in a police precinct called the Explorers, and they're exploring her body. She's in a police program called the Explorers, and they're exploring her body. Man, I can't, I can't make this up. I, listen, I didn't make it up. <laughs> I can't make it up. In a program, in a police program called the Explorers, and, she, and, and the police wind up exploring her body. Come on, man. And you know they did stuff to that girl she ain't never probably felt in her life. Come on, man. No, no, come on, man. You don't want to. You don't want to think about the facts. These are police who put people in restraining, restrained positions. All kind of different stuff they can do to restrain a person, right? You don't think they did all kind of stuff to that girl that she ain't never did did before? Oh, come on, man. You knew they knew. If they knew they was listen, they knew it was a possibility. They possibility they were going to get caught. They probably did everything. Think about it. They already know it's possible they can get caught. So you think they just haphazardly did something, did, did things to that girl? These are cops, by the way. Pretty sure they knew, thought about the possibility of getting caught. So that probably took it up a notch. Man, come on, man. I think they did. I think that girl, and then the girl ultimately came to her mom. You know why I think she did it? Because they did. Because they took it too far. That's what I think. I think they did too much to her, and she went to her mom. That's how they got. That's how they got caught. She went to her mom and told her mom, because her mom is the one that gave the cop her phone, the girl's phone number. the The mother is the one that rep recommended it. The mother recommended that she be part of the program. I can't make this up. So the child came to the mother after it got out of control. And when I think it got out of control was when the cop, the arrogant cops, I'm pretty sure they were arrogant if they were arrogant enough to have sex with a 15 year old girl. And that arrogance probably was displayed in the sexuality that they were having with that girl. Right. So she probably didn't like it. She, it probably made her feel scorned and humiliated. They probably did acts of humiliation on her. Now I'm just being real. Come on, man. You know it. You know they did. Oh, so they just made love to her. They just they just deflowered her and made love to her. They just put some little flowers around her head like a hippie from the 70s and deflowered her. <laughs> put a little white dress on her and put some flowers around her head like the hippies do in the 70s, right? <laughs> man, they probably humiliated that girl. Had all kind of fantasies and stuff. Picking her up from probably probably fantasizing about fantasizing about the real life situation. Picking her up from the program and humiliating her. P picking her up from the police program and humiliating her. I mean, come on, let's be 100. See, when you think about the details, you ain't getting off on it. You're real. You're. It's, 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 it's showing you what happened. 
You thinking about what happened, man. For real. You thinking about what happened. And me and you, people like me and you who are pure, we watch our every thought. Real good people. We watch our character. And then you got police who have who don't care nothing about that. And here you are trying to make sure you come out of every darn thought and all this stuff that these people are bringing against you. All this crazy psychological stuff that they're doing against your thoughts. That's what I'm talking about. You're coming out of all of that. And then you have people that like that, the police that succumb to full lo losing according to what we do. And it's all good. Now, nah, that's anarchy, man. That's anarchy. That's anarchy. When we can sit up and we can have all our, our thoughts straight, making sure we're pure. You know what I mean. Making sure we're pure with everything we watch on TV, making sure how we conduct ourselves in our own environments, in our own environments. We pure and doing everything right. And then police get to get to have sex with a 15 year old girl, bring her to his house and everything. You know, they did everything. Come on. And then nothing happens. They don't even get locked up. Nothing happens. And you think that's a fair world to live in where the people that are supposed to be serving your community, locking up the bad guys, locking up the perverts, locking up the pedophiles, locking up the, the deviants, right? Here they are getting jacked off in a cop car and bringing the girl in the middle of the night to their house. You think that's good? You think that's a just world that we live in? You think that that system deserves to be obeyed? They just fired them. That's it. That's not justice. To, to what? To make them not law enforcement anymore? That's not a charge. Last time I checked, that's not a, 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 a sexual, that's not a sexual molestation charge. Becoming unemployed from the NYPD, that's not a charge. That's not a sexual molestation charge. So why didn't they get charged by the system? that sits up and looks for certain types of particular types of pedophiles and certain looks of them. People that just look strange, them the ones they want. The ones that don't look like you and don't look like you, quite look like you, them the ones they want. The ones you can't make out what color they are, they black or white, or you don't know what color they are, them the ones they want. Yeah, long as you look black enough, you good. Long as you look white enough, you good. Be mixed up like me. Well, they can't make you out. They don't know what you are. Yeah, didn't ask when they want to talk about what you, like, oh, we think he did, we, we think he's strange. Well, do you think these NYPD is strange? Huh? You think the NYPD is strange? Do you think these NYPD cops are strange? <laughs> they had sex with that girl in the middle of the night. And see, I can look at the facts. I can look at the fact of what they did. I'm pretty sure I can look at the fact that they probably did anal on the girl. I can look at the fact that they probably did everything. It humiliated the girl in many ways. Peed on her, probably did everything. They probably did that. Peed in her side, peed inside of her. I can look at the facts just like a doctor. See, you ain't strong enough. You ain't got a strong enough backbone to do that. Huh? I can look at what the, would probably happen. And you'll still send psychological stuff while I'm talking about this. That's what makes your head need to be cut off. They need to cut your head off. Because in all actuality, I can look at the facts and you still and you still playing games, aren't you? Pretty sure that's you and pretty sure that's what it is. But I can look at the facts. Impurity. While your NYPD is messing with 15 year old girls. Yeah, we would listen, man. This is this not even a matter of justice, man. This is beyond that. This is the revolution. That's what I'm trying to show you, people. This is the revolution. This is beyond justice. We don't care nothing about that. No, we don't care nothing about. Listen, this all this got to go. 
<laughs> That's what we talking about now. Yeah, uh-huh. Just like when you go to the hotel and they tell you checkout time is at 11. You know how that feeling it is? When you're sitting up there at 9 and 8 and 9. And, <laughs> and, you, and you dreading the fact that you got to get ready to go. That's what it, that's what's going on now. It's checkout time in the White House. It's checkout time concerning their law system. It's checkout time, man. Just like when you're in a hotel and you dread that, everybody know that feeling. Fully grown people know that feeling. You're trying to get a courtesy about two more hours. <laughs> you're sitting up there watching TV like you ain't never watched TV before. You up there laying in the bed like you ain't never laid it, laying in the bed before you turn on AC for 30 minutes. <laughs> and you tr you savoring all that time because you know it's checkout time. That's the same thing with this situation. It's checkout time. And you've been going out the random acts of pedophilia as a community. You've been going out the random acts of pedophilia when you when when you got established forty four states of child marriage here and now, yeah, uh, ain't no listen, ain't nothing nobody can say to me, man. You see what I'm saying? What the cops gonna say? I don't. And by the way, I've called the precincts and told them about the age of consent under eighteen in forty states. Yeah, you think I'm just in here talking to myself, don't you? I do videos. I call real precincts, and they think they and the guy, th the police thank me for my information. Yeah, that's for all you neighborhood watch people that think you're doing something. Man, you need to have a seat. You a thing of the past. <laughs> you need to have a seat, buddy. I tell a woman, I call you buddy too. You need to have a seat, buddy. <laughs> Violate you even more, buddy. <laughs> Call a woman, buddy. Buddy. You... <laughs> hey, buddy, you need to have a seat. You got 44 states with child marriage. <laughs> Playing no games? You just like a game to you. While you neighborhood watching, I bet you don't know nothing about them, them NYPD cops, do you? You don't know nothing about it, do you? You don't know nothing about it, do you? Yeah, you don't know nothing about it. Yeah, you just used to that old format of thinking you looking out for the kids. Looking out for anybody sketchy. What if they don't look sketchy, though? What happens in that case? What happens in the case where the pedophile doesn't look sketchy? <laughs> I know. You're used to a certain style of a pedophile. But what if they don't fit the style that you're used to? What if they look like rappers? Ooh, what if they have dreadlocks? They look like Rasta, Rastafarians. What if they look like, you know, preppy college white boy kids? The ones that wear their sweaters around, wrapped around their shoulders and stuff. <laughs> what if they look like that? And you know, a lot of times it's, the, it's really the masculine guys the huge, the brawny ones, the real brawny, brawny ones. Them be the ones that do, I, in my experiences in life, where I've met a real pedophile for real in my own personal life, it was a person that I would have never thought it's that type of person. Not, not the one that's kind of eccentric, kind of unusual, kind of separated, secluded, kind of of an introvert. Not that type of individual. He wasn't that type of individual. In fact, he was the mo he was the life of the party. <laughs> so you listen to a real master now, buddy. You listen to a real master. This this pedophile that I met in my real life, yeah, I ain't never really tell you this story. He, I used to date this woman from the South Bronx, right? Tough chick, obviously. She's from a tough part of town. She's from the South Bronx, right? Me and her lived together. She was like 47 years old. I was like 20, 
eight. She was like 47 and I was 28. So we was almost 20 years apart. But it worked because at the time, she was smoking. I, I was smoking weed. She was smoking weed. She was one of them old school chicks that smoked weed and drank. You know what I'm saying? She smoked weed every day. That kind of chick, right? Black chick, you know, cool, right? Used to sell, used to do her thing. You know what I'm saying? And um, so she, her sister, her sister um, had this, this boyfriend, you know, and um, this boyfriend was a pedophile and we didn't know it. And he was cool as, I mean, cool as a fan. Brawny wore Tim's. He wore Timberland boots. Brawny kind of guy, masculine kind of guy. The way he carry himself straight, masculine, manly, all of that, right? No, nothing soft about him at all. Nothing soft at all, man. Not his his not, not how he talk or nothing. You could you you could absolutely get nothing from this man. We played spades with him, he hung out, he was cool, right? At least we thought. She, her, the, my girl's friend's sister had two little girls. You already see where I'm going with this, right? Now, when they, when the little girls came over, he didn't seem affectionate with them in front of us or nothing like that. And me and my girl, we would just host them, you know. We would host and they would come over. we play spades, you know, turn up. And it was nothing abnormal about him. You know what I'm saying? Not in my view. We, we went bowling together on New Year's Eve. We went bowling, hung out drunk, got smashed. Went to the bowling alley and just got smashed and everything, right? Just normal. Then later, <laughs> yeah, that part. Then later, now see, compare me and him together, you would think, I'm not saying, I definitely am not a pedophile, but if anybody had to choose, you probably would choose me because I am different. I look different. I wear my hair different. I wear permed hair. I'm mixed up with all different ethnicities, so my energy is a, a blend. It's not a straight, it's not one type of flavor. It's a blend, right? So you have to kind of get to really know me. And he, he looked, he was more dominantly African. So he act African, right? His vibration was more African than anything, right? So you could kind of understand him easily. You can't understand me easily. I'm not saying that's room to do that, to judge me like that. But most people that are ignorant would think if they had to pick between me and him based on how he dressed, how I dressed, how I wore my hair, I'm more harder to understand basically, right? He was more easy to understand more what you're used to, more common, right? How he dressed, what shoes he wore, everything, right? Found out later he was washing the girls in the bathroom, in the bathtub, playing with them and everything while he washing them. And one of the girls wanted to kill herself, the oldest one. She wanted to kill herself. Now see, he was a nice guy. He was a cool black guy. He know what music to put on. He put on the right song. I put on one song at the party. He changed the other song, and the kids loved the song. Ironically, the kids loved the song he put on. They started dancing around and everything. See, it's those tight. It's those tight. The ones that's too close to the children, they too in vogue with everything the kids are doing. I don't need to be knowing everything the kids do, cause I ain't close enough. Listen, I don't want to be close enough to them to know what they're doing. Yeah, 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 yeah. I want them to have their own world. I want to feel like I'm old and I don't know everything they're doing. Yeah, keep it like that. Keep it like that. Yeah, because I don't want them, I don't want them to think they're in my world. 
Yeah, you ain't in my world. I'm a master. Yeah, you stay right on over there with all the little stuff you do. <laughs> Whatever that may be. But he like he put on a song for the kids and they was bouncing all around. And, see, I put on a more of a, you know, sultry, kind of like, you know, sexy little sultry adult like song, you know, feeling yourself kind of song. <laughs> you know, but he gonna put on some bounce around song the kids love it. I'm like, okay. He had his moment. He had his moment doing that. And, and then come out to be a pedophile. Boom. Ow. <laughs> I guess you really made him bounce around, didn't you? <laughs> I, hey, I guess you really made the kids bounce around, didn't you? <laughs> found out from my girlfriend, who was 47, 48. Found out from her that he was, like I said, watching the girls making them take baths. And we knew this. And we thought it was strange. Like, now, remind you, I'm only 28 years old. So, you know, I kind of got that thing where I'm like, yeah. But I'm not a, I'm not going to be a man. Like, I'm, I haven't came truly into all my manhood. So I'm not, like, taking a hold of that situation and trying to pull anybody to the side and make them feel a certain type of way about it. You know what I'm saying? I'm just listening. But I'm thinking to myself, damn, that's kind of strange a little bit. We both having pillow talk, me and my woman, me and my girlfriend at the time, we having pillow talk about it, like how strange it is. So <laughs> we looking at how strange it is. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then come to find out, he was, like, doing all kind of stuff when he was washing them up, man. Like, he was getting off on the whole thing. The whole thing, man. And I know how she got he got away with it. Because no one thought he was a style of a pedophile. Think about it. Why are you going to look, like, sketchy? Why are you going to be kind of weird? <clears throat> If you're into girl, if you're into girls, not women, you're gonna come off like you're cool and every, you know, come on, I'm cool, you know, like a Mickey Mouse type of character, right? Mickey Mouse is cool with the mom, cool with the kids, cool with everybody. Even grandma like Mickey Mouse, even grandma like Mickey Mouse. You come in the house and Mickey Mouse come in the house, everybody like Mickey Mouse. <laughs> These be the Mickey Mouse characters. Then see somebody like me, I'm standoffish. And see, you think that's the, yeah, he, he's a little weird. I'll tell you one thing, and I'm going to do a video on this too. Hey, hey, you can't be a pedof you can't be no pedophile step being standoffish, can you? Hey, I tell you that. Hey, you can't be no pedophile minding your, your business, can you? You can't be a pedophile a million miles away from children, huh? Hey, you can't be no pedophile when you're in your own world and children in their own world, can you? Yeah, let's keep let's keep it 100. Let's keep it factual. You can't you can't be no pedophile when you're standoffish towards children. No, you can't be. You can't be because, in my opinion, the king, the kids in these days, and this is a prophetic message. Kids in these days have to stay out the throne room of the king. No longer can we have the children among the king. Because there's too much foolishness going on. There's too many liars. There's too many people that make up stories and make up false testimonies. We can no longer have the children in the king's room. And I'm going to do a video on that too. Because you think, oh, we should be just normal. No, we're not living in a normal time. We're living in a time where sometimes girls may be feeling you. It ain't your fault. <laughs> it ain't your fault. Hey, oh, come on. You don't want to talk about that. You don't want to talk about that, but sometimes these teenagers be feeling you. Or you don't want to talk about it, do you? You don't want to talk about when these girls be feeling you and you ain't got nothing to do with it. Oh, okay. You ain't never been through that. Oh, okay. Okay. Like how I, how I see it, children got to stay out the throne room where the, man, where the king is at. No kids allowed. Times are too critical. People can make up all kinds of stories and say all kinds of stuff that didn't even happen. So based on that, 
You got to use wisdom and keep them out the throne room away from leadership and kings and queens, period. Keep them away from the kings and queens. Times are too critical. And, I, and I've, I've been needing to do a message on that. That's been in my heart for, for some time now. Keeping the kids out the throne room. You ain't got nothing to hide. You ain't got nothing to hide. You ain't got to prove that. It's just a different time and season we live in where people are lying and kids have abnormal sexuality that they doing stuff that nobody don't know about. And then they pull, they get in the king room and they want to do stuff. <laughs> yeah. They get in the king room and they want to act out. Oh, okay. I'm talking about the ones they have crushes on. You know, you know what I'm talking about? The ones they talking about they got crushes on. Yeah, they want to act out when they're around you. You shouldn't have them in your room. That's what I'm saying. And, and the bottom line is, someone that's standing office, you can't accuse that man or that woman of anything, not can you? But it's the ones that's cool all the time. The ones that's like Mickey Mouse. Them the ones that get you. Them, that's the one that gets your kids. We had no idea this man was so cool. He was the life of the party. I'm talking about in my personal life. The, the only the pedophile that I met, he was the life of the party. By the way, these girls was under, I think they were both under nine, 10, 10, 11, nine, somewhere around in there. But either way it went, this man was, they, they were under 10 years old. He was in his 40s, easy. Mid to late 40s. I'm thinking late 40s, mid 40s, somewhere around in there. But the girls were under, they weren't teenagers. Let's put it like that. They were not even teenagers, right? They were not teenagers. And I ain't never been in no situation like that. You know what I mean? If girls have a crush, if a girl have a crush, I use that in a pure way to lead them. I use it to lead them into the proper way. If a, if a little girl has a crush on me, I, I tell them, stay in school, do, do what's right, listen to your mama. And that's going to influence them because they they like you, Right. And they think you're appealing to them, right? You can use that in a positive way, right? But see, predators use it in the evil way. When these young girls have crushes on them and they see it in their face, they take full advantage of it. And it's always the ones that, that, that you think are the coolest guy, the guy you got your guard down. We just laughing, drinking, having beers. <laughs> That's my man. Yeah, if clean up the kitchen. I'm I'm going I'm going to sleep. You done got so comfortable you letting him around the house. And now he messing with your kids. I'm telling you, I'm just this is from experience. This is real life. This is real life. We we didn't know this person was a pedophile. I'm sharing. I I'm sharing with you a real life story where it re this guy really that I knew really engaged with children, right? In modern day and time, this was like 2009, 2010. This is when this was going on, 2009, 2010. So just now over 10 years ago, right? Those girls are young women now, right? Because they were, what, that's 10 years for both of them. They got to be both 10 years plus, 13 years ago. Both of them are, are adults now, right? Easy, right? And they probably have more respect for me than him because I treated them the right way. I didn't, I didn't take those feelings that they had from one of them had for me and, and manipulated. I kept boundaries. 
those same girls, because they was already manipulated sexually, when they came into my room with my girlfriend, you know, in the morning, and she was trying to get, one of them was trying to get to the auntie, her auntie, which is my girlfriend. But she was like young, but trying to crawl over me. But I was like, hold, hold, hold up, hold up. You're getting too close. You, she was getting too close to my body. So I was like, I had to put that in perspective. I did that right in front of my girlfriend. I didn't check what my girlfriend say. Hey, is this okay for me to say this? I checked that. That's what real men do. I set up the boundary. Now, it was innocent, you know, kids get in the bed, you know. But then when you, it, but it's a thin line between that and kids having little flirting things that they do that some people don't know about. So I had to check that. I was like, hey, 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 hold up, hold up, hold up. Get off this bed. And that was the end of that. She knew where I stood. It wasn't nothing going to happen. And see, that man was already molesting her. That's why she was already putting out vibe towards other men. And see, I handled that perfectly. See, men go through real, real, your time will come to be tested. To see what you really are about as a man. And I was a young man. 28, 27, 28, 28, and, um, you know, this man was almost 50, messing around this girl, and I, and I passed the test, and he did, he started, like, they was friends, they was my girl's sisters children so they came around and there was nothing in my heart nothing in my mind i treat children as children that's how i treat them and so but with him he 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 went home with the children and was doing stuff all with them and everything man you know what i'm saying and it was the one that that you think is the one that oh oh he cool you know the one that's down and stuff the hoodie, the Tims, the baggy clothes. He had baggy jeans on. Like, you know, you know how guys used to dress in the 90s with the baggy jeans and the hoodies and the Tims? That's how he would look. With a bald head, smoking cigarettes, drinking. You would have had no, I promise you, how he carried himself. You would have had no idea. If you had to pick between me and him, you would have went with me. If you thought something was weird about one of us, that's how cool he was. Let's just put it like this. That's how normal he was. That's how average he was. And I'm the one that passed the test and he didn't. Guess what happened to him? He died of a heart attack. Boom. He died of a heart attack. That was his karma. Because... He, he was messing around girls, you know, washing them up, doing little funny stuff, and he died. He wasn't that old. He was only, he probably was in his early 50s. Just now coming to terms with being an older man. Just now we getting to know, okay, I'm an older man, and he, then he died. Because in all actuality, he didn't make it to being an older man to making wise decisions as old men do, right? I didn't never say you wouldn't be tested or tempted. It's what you do. I didn't say, you, you, you know, you won't never be in those situations, but it's what you do in the situations. See, and that's, and that's a perfect example because in that situation, I passed the test I told that girl to stay out my bed because how she was crawling on the bed. I told her to stay out my bed. I'm 28 years old talking like that. This man probably older than me than I am now. I'm 41. I'm, he, I'm sure he was older than 41. He was about, my girl was 47. So I know she was like, he was around her age, their age. He was probably like, 46, something like that, 45, 46, 47, yeah, he probably was that, 46, probably, yeah, about 46, 
between 46 and 48. And he passed it. He failed and he had a heart attack and died. Now, you can say that's coincidental. I say that's karma. And this is one thing you got to be assured of. And what people got to realize is whatever people are supposed to get for what they've done, whatever they're supposed to get, whether it's you, who you, if you think it's me or if you think whoever it is, trust and believe people will get what they deserve, right? And if it's good, they're going to get good. If it's bad, it's, they're going to get bad. You're going to get what you deserve in life. That's why it's always going to work out for good people. But, but woe to the man that plays games. Woe to the people that really are pedophiles. Woe to the people that have 44 states with child marriage. Woe to the people that have passed the last child marriage law three years ago in this country. Woe to them. Right? While the rest of us are keeping our nose clean and staying pure and making sure we, we're pure through all these psychological games that this community is playing and the government is playing. Through all those situations, we're keeping it pure. But woe to them that just passed child marriage laws three years ago. So see, I've been in a real situation. Now, like I told people, with, with children with children, if you did stuff with children when you were children, that does not make you no pedophile. If you were doing stuff with girls when you was a boy and you was a boy, you were not a pedophile. You might, people may try to make you feel some type of way. You may feel self-conscious or whatever you, about what you did as a child, but at the end of the day, you was a child yourself. And that's the part that you can't leave out because people will sit up and play you. They'll play you about your own history. It's like, yo, I was a child too. And we both, it was consensual and mutual and all of that. And we both were messing around. You just acting like I was the one messing around and I was a man. <laughs> Don't let people play you like that. And they'll keep that little girl, so to speak, in that little world, like she was a little girl and you was a grown man, and they'll keep that. They'll make, they'll make, put that in your mind like as if you was an adult with a little girl, that little girl that you was with. When you was a little boy, too, at the time. But they'll try to dress you up right now as a predator, like you was a man, and, and remind you of the little girl you was with, like you was a man doing it. Like you was a full grown man doing that. Don't let people play you like that, man. We all have experiences as children, right? That's the balance in all the things I say. I'm not saying you ain't going to have no experiences as children. But when you grow up and you, and you change, you deserve to be treated like everybody else. You deserve to be treated just like everybody else. Because half the people I've talked to and listened to, they got something, they, something happened to them as children or they did something. It's always like that. It's kind of common sense you would think that people would have some type of sexuality as children, but it's among other children. It's not an adult playing around a child. That's what we're talking about. Right? So, don't let people play with you, man. You know what I'm saying? And you got 44 states of child marriage over here. You know what I'm saying? You got four child marriage laws over here. You got the age of consent all across the world all whack, out of whack, you know, in Jamaica, 16 years old, that's 16 year old vagina, by the way, that's not, that's not a grown, that's not a grown, um, that's not a grown woman. Okay. We got to check ourselves. You know what I'm saying? Don't try to check me. You got to check everybody. You got the best thing you can do is check things collectively. And that's going to check everybody. Makes sense. 
But you can't be out here individually trying to do anything. You ain't going to get nowhere. What you need to do is you need to go back to these laws. You need to go back to the law system. You need to go back to the law system of the country and 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 and, and check that. Don't try to check individuals because you're really in actuality you're not going to get anywhere. You're not going to get anywhere that way. How you're going to get where you how you're going to get somewhere is checking things, checking the the system, holding the system responsible. That's how you that's how you're going to move. That's how you're going to win. But an individual, you put in the cart before the horse. In the South, that's what we call it. When you got your priorities out of whack and you're trying to do something that is not, should not be prioritized as first. It shouldn't be. It should be you checking the system in America. That's what it should be. That's what it should be. And then that's going to check everything. But when you have child marriage, pedophiles are having a field day with that. They're having a field day because they can marry children and, and take them home. You know, and, 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 and nobody is in their way. And so to me, and I hate, and I might, I'm going to probably have to wind up doing a video on this too because it's almost like child marriage is preserved for white America because you know black culture is not going to allow that. You know, it's nowhere in black culture in America that's going to allow child marriage. That's not going to happen. But white America has these nooks and crannies. <clears throat> they got these little places around the hill and around the way where they can slip around and do little stuff like that. So to me, it's like when you really know America, you you start to feel that this is an accommodating, a perverted co accommodation to white America because you know ain't no other ethnicity able to do it. You know they ain't. The Puerto Ricans ain't doing it. The Mexicans ain't doing it. Man, they can't have no child marriage in their neighborhoods. In a Mexican neighborhood, you ain't going to be married to no child. Man, you're going to get ran out that neighborhood. Anybody see you with a child in the neighborhood? Same thing with black. Are you in a black neighborhood married to a child? Man, you ain't going to make it. But a white community is so complex, like how they got rich places where they live off in the hills and just different complexities of their environments, they can easily, especially with, their, with them not being on foot as much as other ethnicities are on foot, they have vehicles, they can drive around, they can whiz past people, they don't even have to interact with people as much. They're the culture that doesn't have to interact with people as much. They don't have to do, they got their, their own situations isolated from everybody else. They don't have to live in apartments, they live in their house, they don't have to, you know, they got their own cars. They whiz past people. They whiz past people. You know, and you have, and so when you look at it for what it is, you know that it's probably white America that has taken more advantage of this than anybody. Where we do know white Americans passed these laws. You know, black people didn't pass these child marriage laws. You know, no Hispanics and Latinos didn't pass these child marriage laws. Come on, it's out of their, it's outside of their culture. It's in the culture of white America to pass these child marriage laws. That's who's doing it. And that's what you got to be real about. That's the ones doing it. You know? So, I'm trying to get people to get off of trying to, if you have a passion to bring pedophiles to justice, don't try to go after one style of a pedophile. Don't go after one a sketchy look, you know. Don't be stereotypical, like, with your perspective on what a pedophile looks like. It may be a guy in a suit with a Lamborghini in a Ferrari or a Ferrari. 
the person that you least expect, like I was talking about the bald-headed black guy with the Tims and the hoodie and the, you know, and the baggy jeans, you know what I'm saying? Smoking the cigarettes and drinking the beer. You know, you would have never guessed it was him. And that's how a lot of it is getting done under the cracks because a lot of you, a lot of you Americans, you just get fooled by style. You get fooled by style. You know what I'm saying? And I'm more trusting of somebody that's kind of weird because they can't camouflage themselves in something that you're used to. They 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 don't they can't hide behind nothing that they, that you're used to. So whoever they are is just there. They don't they can't persuade you. You know they can't they what how can they persuade you? They're gonna already feel unfamiliar to you. You know what I'm saying? And they don't have anything to pull on to hide behind. You know what I'm saying? So I trust somebody that's a little eccentric and more unique as an individual. Somebody that's more little, little, somebody might consider different. You know what I'm saying? That person, I would trust them over someone that can camouflage themselves behind, you know, hip hop, you know, rap, you know, all this different stuff, rock and roll for white people, all that little paraphernalia that people hide behind. Them. You know what I'm saying? I'd rather trust somebody that just a little, little different. Because that already tells you something. They ain't hiding. Because if, if if they was really a pedophile, then they're going to try to look normal, right? So if they're looking weird, I trust that. Makes sense. But somebody that's super normal, super normal, like, like super, super, super normal, nah, I don't trust that. And that's from experiences. So I trust people that's unique, you know, that's unique, individual, you know, that's what you go with. Because at the end of the day, that's what you really should be going with anyway. When you pick your friends, you pick your friends that's unique. You know, someone that's them that that is is themselves. That are themselves. You know. But the bottom line is, man, we got to stop. You know, there was this phenomenon where people were like making up fake accounts, trying to catch individual pedophiles. We need to take all those people that that do that, right? And you need to make them pay attention to the police, the military, with the age of consent at 16. You need to make them pay attention to the American community that has the age of consent under 18 in 40 states. You need to make them pay attention to 44 states with child marriage and the last child marriage law passed July 1st, 2019 that allows adults to marry children at any age. Okay? And it says with certain circumstances recognized it doesn't matter. It's the fact that they give the American community an option to marry children. And they've done that in the past three years when none of the American community wants to marry children. So this is anarchy, too, because no one feels the need to obey this system anymore. Do you? You don't feel the need to obey it, do you? That's what I'm saying. So, see, this is the revolution. This is anarchy. This is all of that. You know what I'm saying? We're going to get dark patriots that's on the side of the Americans, rain, sun, and shine. They're going to be with them, rain, sun, and shine. Even as pedophiles, they're going to transform into pedophiles because they just want to be with, they're going to just stick with America. And then you're going to have a big portion of us that decide to come out as a result of the present state of America. So, you know, look at things for what they are and not what you want them to be. You know what I'm saying? You feel me?